Once upon a time, there was a game called Psychonauts. It was released at a time when video games were striving to be taken seriously, in the same way smug teenagers feel the need to disassociate from everything they perceive as childish. Psychonauts was well received by critics and players at the time, but a lot of people either never heard about it or were unwilling to take a chance on a cartoony platformer that wasn't part of an established brand and didn't follow the superficially mature trends of the time. That's a real shame because a lot of players missed out on a charming, abundantly imaginative game. It was childlike, not childish, appealing to an audience spanning all ages in a similar way as the best works of animation studios like Pixar. We who played the game remember it, mostly very fondly. It had a few rough spots, but those were completely overwhelmed by the flood of creative imagination on display. The game's lackluster sales ruled out immediate sequels, but 16 years later, we have Psychonauts 2. And it's a really terrific game. Everything that was good about the first one is present here in a more accessible, modernized package. The story follows Raz as he moves from the kid-friendly summer camp setting into the larger world of the Psychonauts, a secret agency of psychics working to protect the world. The game switches between the real world and the wildly varied, imaginative levels that take place inside the minds of various characters. These levels represent their psyches mechanically and visually. This marriage of story and gameplay, along with unique, consistently varying artistic treatments, is the strongest aspect of the game. Luigi's Mansion 3 did a similar thing a couple of years ago, with nearly every floor of its towering hotel having a different theme, but it never went so far as to change the overall graphical style of the presentation. Psychonauts 2 not only does this, but makes each level tell a story that contributes to a larger whole. Platforming mechanics are solid, certainly much smoother and better tuned than the original game. It's not quite on par with Mario, but then again, nothing else is. Being a super-powered psychic, Raz has a variety of abilities that make the platforming fun from the very beginning. Combat takes a little longer to become engaging, but eventually it proves a fun and flexible system, allowing for a variety of playstyles as you mix and match abilities. Neither combat nor platforming is particularly difficult. I felt like I only needed healing items a handful of times, and only when I was playing sloppy. It's not challenging enough to force better habits. Still, I'll take that over the sharp difficulty spike that deterred many players from finishing the original game. Although it's on the easy side, I would never describe Psychonauts 2 as boring or unengaging, and to my mind, that's the most vital consideration when talking about difficulty and challenge in a game. If there's anything missing from the tonic of gameplay, it's puzzles. The human mind is a complex, confusing place. Solving puzzles would be a good abstraction for helping to sort things out, and it would make the gameplay as varied and inventive as the art. But Psychonauts 2 never goes there. The mysteries are spelled out, and the problems are solved for you if you just keep pressing forward with the platforming and combat. One early level has you trying to change someone's thoughts by making new connections between concepts. This is a really neat idea, but instead of doing the rewiring as a puzzle, it's a platforming traversal tutorial that doesn't require any real thought to solve. I can't help but think that puzzles are a missed opportunity. Although Psychonauts 2 is consistently creative, this collection of levels is a little less memorable than the first games. There are more of them, but perhaps that dilutes their impact. I remember every single level in the original game, but even though I just played this one, there are only a few that really stick out when I think back. The middle of the game especially gets a bit samey with its setups. This year's other big 3D platformer, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, was marketed almost entirely on graphics. While it's a technically impressive showpiece, it reminds me of a generic animated family film, and few aesthetics are less appealing to me. Psychonauts 2 is continued proof that art design is more important than technical polish, but I do think it's a little bit lacking on the technical side of things. Its roots as a mid-budget indie game are still visible. There's just something about the game's default look that lacks that last bit of visual cohesion, despite the fantastic creativity and charm of the art. Psychonauts 2 is a great game, but I like it less than it deserves. Cold classics can be hard to live up to. That's part of the issue. I have few objective complaints about the game. On paper, it's largely what I'd hoped for, and maybe that's the problem. 
After so long a gap between games, Psychonauts 2 ends up being less surprising and fresh than I'd hoped. When the original Psychonauts was released, there weren't many games that engaged with mental illness in a compassionate, reflective way. Today, that's changed. Depression, anxiety, and trauma are increasingly common themes in popular media, even video games. Psychonauts deals with them in its own unique way, but it no longer feels original just for delving into these topics. Mind-bending, reality-warping levels and sequences have also become commonplace. But the biggest reasons why I didn't wholeheartedly love this game are the story and tone. What's there is good. The writing is sharp, typical of Tim Schafer, balancing wit, silliness, and solid structure. The script knows when to be serious and when to be comedic. It's comfortable working in either mode. To its credit, it never undercuts an emotionally serious moment with a dumb throwaway joke. Most of the game's runtime is spent on the main plot. I've critiqued a lot of games for being unfocused and bloated, but in this case, I would have preferred more diversions. There's a big cast of characters, old and new. Everyone gets a moment to shine, but the story is dominated by just a few characters to the detriment of the ensemble. There are characters in this game that should have gotten more time in the spotlight, more character growth and development, but they aren't afforded it. The problem with so much focus on the main plot is that a lot of it ends up being predictable. I didn't call all the twists and turns, but the general shape of the plot becomes apparent by the end of the first act. The structures that hold up this game are visible throughout in a way that's more common to older games. There's nothing really wrong with this, but it did affect my immersion in the game's world and story. I was often thinking about what a recent revelation meant in terms of the game design and not the narrative. There's an awful lot of getting to know characters' histories and a whole lot less of getting to know people in the present tense. Those are two very different things. Effectively, most of the story is told through exposition, even if creatively done exposition. Eventually, I got tired of learning about the plot in this way, especially because some of the information is repeated. A lot of the minds you visit in Psychonauts 1 are unrelated characters, but in Psychonauts 2, the vast majority have intertwining histories and relationships. Over time, that contributes to a feeling of familiarity, which is the antithesis of the freshness and surprise I was craving in each level. In Psychonauts 1, each mind you visited was a new and different experience. In Psychonauts 2, it's a little more like variations on a theme, even though the visuals can be wildly different. In the end, the problem is that the story doesn't land with as much impact as it should. Again, on paper, it's solid, but the distribution of information in the actual game leads to an uneven experience. Ultimately, I wish that Psychonauts 2 was a little more whimsical, escapist fun than it ends up being. It's certainly not a bleak game, but a lot of time is spent exploring past tragedies. Nearly everyone has some kind of dramatic trauma that's shaped them. This is a relatable theme. Mental health is a very logical thing to explore in a game about psychics entering people's minds. Normally, I would find the maturity of the plot and themes to be a positive, but I think after so much real life darkness lately, I was looking for, hoping for, that summer camp tone of the original game to be carried forward into a fun spy theme in this one. Shortly before the release of Psychonauts 2, I finally played Psychonauts and the Rhombus of Ruin, a short VR game that takes place between the main titles. I found that fun, light, adventurous tone there. Despite the brevity and design limitations of that game, I ended up really enjoying it, and was looking forward to more fun Psychonauts adventures in the full sequel. This game only gave me part of what I was looking for in that regard. I wish I liked Psychonauts 2 as much as I think I should, but for me, somehow, the whole is less than the sum of its parts. Those constituent parts are well worth experiencing, though. I want to reiterate that this is a very good game, and a lot of my complaints are personal. In maturing, Psychonauts 2 has lost some of the childlike whimsy. It's replaced that feeling with a story that's perfectly fine, even good. It's richer and more meaningful than the original game, but it's also a little less special. <laughs>